good evening hey, uh, un unmute 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 Good evening and a very very warm welcome to everyone who has made time to be present on this very very special occasion. We are going today to launch the second edition of this very significant book, Stories of Social Awakening: Reflections of Dalit Refugee Lives of Bengal, written by Jatin Bala, translated by a number of dynamic wonderful translators of whom we have one with us today, and edited by none other than Professor Jadeep Sarangi. uh this is one book which has already made its mark in academic circles across the globe and i would like to talk about uh, i'd like to read from janet wilson's uh, comments which adorn the back cover of the book powerful and poignant jatin bala's stories about family community the trauma of the refugee camp and harrowing abuses suffered by bengali dalits our call for social revolution and a casteless society written in muscular prose and aptly translated from the bengal the narratives of social consciousness in this new and updated edition of stories of social awakening bring dalit writing out of the margins they confirm its importance for dalit identity and political struggle for liberation janet m wilson emerita professor university of northampton uk This very wonderful book will be launched amidst a wonderful panel of scholars and speakers who have consented to be with us this evening and I would like to request the editor of the book uh, who has a standing uh, commitment to dalit studies to present the welcome note for everybody over to you jadeep sir thank you so much and thank you everybody from the part of india where the ganges flows pranams to each one present here this book has a social cause and i thank everyone involved in the book for endorsements professor janet wilson professor asaluddin uh, professor roop kumar barman who is present here thank you for your encouragement and in and uh, endearing words for the book i thank the publisher who is traveling i don't know whether he will be able to attend the program or not it's a great honor that uh, honorable vice chancellor chadu ramchand munmu university of charam professor omio kumar panda is here is a great educationist and uh, he is in charge of an of uh, university that is blooming and at the very early stage in under his able guidance the university will show directions for future course of higher education in bengal and beyond welcome uh, omio babu thank you uh, i welcome uh, nana dadan a very important person for the book professor rup kumar barman who is a specialist professor of history uh, an eminent scholar in refugee studies that is studies and ambedkar studies department of history jadavpur university and uh, he is uh, is one of the, my mentors in this uh, particular event and one of the mentors of this book welcome uh, professor rupke barman sir thank you so much for your grace this time It's wonderful to have uh, Dr. R. Megan Rao from Kakatiya University and uh, Board of Studies member Warangal, uh, southern part of India, and uh, she is a very leading scholar in the field. And thank you, ma'am, for thank honoring you. us. Thank you, sir. We welcome Dr. Shruti Nikam, Professor of English, University of Mumbai, Chairperson, Board of Studies, Mumbai University. uh to this program thank you welcome shudhi babu thank you sir welcome. thank you calcutta is your second home Shruti. thank you good evening we welcome professor s armstrong professor and head department of english madras university but he is traveling he will be joining us shortly and he has reached just reached madurai for a very special reason and he will be joining us shortly by around 7:45 welcome professor s armstrong 
Uh, welcome, Dr. Aninda S. Choudhury, very senior faculty department of English, Asham English, Silchar, for your gracious presence. I thank many great scholars from the southern part of India, northern part of India, western India, eastern India, and northeast India, I think pan Indian, who are with us today. I welcome uh, the trans one of the translators. Dr. Nishi Pulogurta, who will be reading one of the translated stories. He, she translated. Welcome, Nishi. Uh, I also welcome the writer who is present with us, Mr. Jotin Bala. And uh, he is uh, a very committed artist. I will say uh, people outside Bengal, beyond Bengal, partition always talked about Punjab partition. But this part of partition, is so crucial and so uh, vibrant also. And that was, uh, you know, in a kind of demand for translation into of short stories, uh, poetry and novels, memoirs. And the translation is only one thing through which we'll come in terms with what is happening and what has really happened. Jyotin Bara's stories are thrilling stories and he spent uh, many, many years in refugee camps in Bengal, different parts of refugee camps in Bengal. And many of his stories deal with the lives of refugee camps, rights, violation of civic rights, human rights in refugee camps, and the state government policies, acts, central government policies, acts, and uh, conditions of those refugee camps. And so these stories and not only stories, but stories of social consciousness. And I think I think uh, who the readers, after reading the stories, they will be a different kind of men because these stories are cascade of knowledge, which are, uh, are still to be uh, in the parlance of knowledge these days. And when we talk about this part of the partition, we estimate the number of refugees up to 1970 are over 5 million to West Bengal alone. This includes around 4.1 million coming between 1946 to 1958 and 1 1.2 million coming between 1959 and 1971. And all these stories concentrate on land rights, voting rights, quality living rights, refugee camps, rights, as I have already mentioned, the politics propositions, acceptance, rejection, appropriation. So Jyotin Bala's stories are really uh, things that can change lives. I won't go in details because the book is with all of you. And those who are outside Bengal uh, must be curious to know about it because these are not much translated into English. I think once all these are translated into English, we will have a new dimensions to look at Bengal and look at refugee conditions because we are aware of the fact that this year's Nobel Prize uh, winner, uh, the book is, of course, a uh, discourse on uh, the refugee lives in, in Africa. We understand that Africa and, and, and in transmigration. So, uh, this part of uh, refugee problem, this part of refugee negotiation is, uh, is something very interesting to look at. And uh, we hope that uh, this book launch and this book will serve some purpose to the cause for which it is written and directed. I thank each one, each one coming from different parts of India, making this event a success. And I thank uh, Bashudara Rai for coordinating it and all the translators I remember how uh, committed they were in translation. Translation is always I believe is not definite I, it, is, uh, it is an act it is a continuous process no translation is definite with my humble submission I, I thank everyone again I, am, I want to see more works by Jyotin Bala because he is a very senior writer in Bangla and written so much of it. And his novel, Shikor Chira Jibon, Rootless Life, is 
is, is, is a mesmerizing novel. I recommend each one uh, present beyond the zone of Bengali. Bengali is a Bengali tradition. Should also read the book to know about Bengali tradition, Bengali culture, Bengali identity. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for making the book so close. So Over to my. Thank you, sir. And uh, it's a real treat and also an asset to readers uh, outside Bengal. Uh, as I was just talking to Nishidi a little before the program, uh, though I'm a Bengali, I am illiterate in Bengali as such, not having uh, a knowledge of the uh, formal knowledge of the language. So it's a treat. It's an asset for readers outside Bengal. These 14 stories, which have been wonderfully translated by very sensitive academic scholars, uh, will give you an insight into the very difficult uh, histories that have been uh, repressed and are continually being erased today. Uh, to take the program forward, I would like to request, since we have the pleasure of the August Company of uh, the Vice Chancellor of Sadhu Ram Chandmurmu University, Jharagram, uh, Professor Amir Kumar Panda, I would request uh, and I would, uh, you know, I, we will be very grateful, sir, if you could, you know, address us today and talk to us. Over to you, sir. Good evening, uh, Bosundara. Good evening, Professor Rupkumar Barman, Professor Armstrong. Professor Anindo S. Choudhury, Professor Meghna Rao, Sudhir Nikam, uh, Nishi Fulugutta, uh, Gutta, and, and many more. Last but not the least, uh, Mr. Jyotin Bala. Now, you know, uh, I was, I, I am a student of chemistry, so when uh, Dr. Sarangi asked me to just formally inaugurate this program, I, I got, I really got embarrassed. But, you know, I spent uh, about 10 years in North Bengal when I was there in University of North Bengal. Uh, the, I think I understand if I am not wrong, Dr. Professor Rukumar Barman is also from North Bengal. Yes, sir. Yes. I also, I also, I, I taught in North Bengal University during the period of uh, 2007 to 2015. So I know uh, many of your good friends from North Bengal. And uh, I know, you know, uh, I was going through uh, just being curious, like uh, the, the, the problem of refugee is very common in, in especially in North Bengal, northern part of Bengal, in the eastern part of Bengal, not so common in western part of Bengal where uh, we do work now, like Bidyasagar University or Jagram, or in the southern part, because they have not been exposed to the trauma of being refused. You have something, one fine bonding, you become a rootless people. But if you go through the history, means I would say, the fact that humans have lived as nomads for 99% of the history. And if you see, until about 10,000 years ago, most human had no permanent home and simply moved from one place to other. Especially in the Northeast, now the issue of, uh, I shouldn't put myself into that debatable, but you know what I am meaning to. Like, so the so-called citizenship and other issues are coming out. But my humble question, being a student of chemistry, before the galaxy of uh, eminent, uh, later, eminent, I would call social scientists, can we really put a boundary? So-called Bangla, Kanta Tarer Bara which we call, which we have termed which at the border. I'm sure it would be a good collection and good creation. And I must congratulate Dr. Jaydeep Sarangi in taking the initiative to edit the book. I wish you all a success. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for addressing us for your uh, kind blessings. 
And thank you also for raising this very significant questions, uh, whether you know, we are here to talk about that, whether borders uh, today mean anything, and if yes, uh, how do we relocate you know, our humanity through and across borders? So thank you very much for raising that here. And we have, as I said, a wonderful lineup of experts who will you know, illuminate various aspects and dimensions of the book. Uh, Emma Saaduddin, who also has uh, written a very generous endorsement for the book, says that this particular book showcases a clutch fascinating Bengali short stories in English translation that explore lives of Dalit refugees from different perspectives. Doubly marginalized, being displaced, penniless from their hearth and home, and also for being Dalits. The stories chronicle the lives of these people at a bare, basic subsistence level. The mere survival becomes a daily struggle. Sarenki's lucid editorial provides a helpful contact for the reading of these stories that are stark and at times unbearable. We hope that we will get more insights into this book as the program proceeds. And to talk further about the book, I would like to invite Professor Roop Kumar Burman, who is a professor of history and eminent scholar on refugees and Dalits, based at the Department of History, Jadapur University, Kolkata. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, today, we have a number of scholars as well as the participants. I am really grateful to the organizers of this program for inviting me. And here uh, we have found uh, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of SRCMUJ University, uh, Meghna Rao, Sudhir Nikam, Nishi Pulu Gota, and the author Jatin Bala, and of course the editor Jaydeep Sharangi and Bashudhara Rai, as well as other participants. Today, uh, the book that is going to be launched uh, for Mali that has already drawn attention of the scholars long back, and it is uh, when, when uh, one of the well-known work relating to the refugee studies as well as the Dalit literature, both. The title of the book itself is an excellent one that deals with stories of social awakening, reflections of Dalit refugee lives of Bengal. Here, two terms are very, very important. One is called Dalit, the second one is called refugee. But we have to start with the first word that is refugee. Uh, Professor uh, Panda has already raised the question that since the very beginning of civilization to till date, People are migrating from the place of their origin. If you think about the history of the early human beings that originated in Africa and their migration or dispersal to other parts of the world, as well as the uh, migration of the Javanese people uh, in the, uh, from that part to the uh, other states of Southeast Asia up to East Asia, including China, Japan, that migration taken place. And from Africa, the human migration has taken place to Asia, Europe, or other countries. And even in India, we have the people, those who had migrated from other parts of the world. And since the very beginning of the Old Testament, you will find the question of forced migration. The people, they were looking for the new land as the place of their destination, not voluntarily. We have also found the causative factors for forced migration. They were forced to migrate from the place of their origin to other land. Though in the ancient and medieval period, the discourse called the refugee studies was not there. But the refugee is a term that drawn the attention of the academic world basically since the last hundred years. It is after the First World War, we have seen that huge migration of people because of the dying out of the former empires Four empires lost their existence, the Russian Empire, as well as the Turkish Empire, and also the empires of other countries that lost their existence. And that led to the birth of several new states. And with the rise of new states, we have seen that the people, those who have a different kind of identity, they were either forced to migrate for the separate destination, 
And eventually, there was the growth of consciousness to deal with the history of the refugees. And in the post second, and particularly in the post First World War period in Europe, two countries that created a terror, and that is the most discussed issue in the history between the two world wars that is known to everyone. And we have seen that the people, they are looking for the separate destination from the country of their origin. And after the Second World War, we have seen a considerable number of empires, former colonial empires, they lost their existence. And there was the rise of a considerable number of new states. And that not only uh, relating to South Asia, like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, also in Southeast Asia, several new countries were born which were earlier colonized by the West European, a considerable, a very small number of West European countries, they had colonized the countries of South Asia, Southeast Asia, also Africa. And the post 1950s, particularly in Africa, there was the rise of a considerable number of new states. When you know, in 1960 only, 17 African states have been originated and they got the membership of the United Nations. And that is called the African year, very significant year. The 17 number of states have been originated in the world as a nation state. And also in the post second world war, we have seen the internal conflict in almost all the newly liberated countries of Asia, as well as in Africa that has continued. And the latest state that has originated in Asia Southeast Asia, that is called East Timor, that marks its journey only in 2000. The Indonesian case of national movement, unification has drawn the attention of the entire world because of the theories propagated by George Kahid and his student like Benedict Anderson, that imagine community. But that, I think, history has shown that that is not the matter of imagined community. Rather, we have seen the internal contradiction that led to the rise of East Timor as a national state only in 2000. And in case of Africa, that is perhaps more dangerous. That is perhaps more critical because of the internal conflict, starting from the democratic state called Congo to Burundi, Rwanda, Jaire, everywhere. You have seen the internal or inter-tribal or inter-indigenous or inter-indigenous people conflict in Africa. And uh, entire Africa is full with the conflict as well as the internal and international cross-border migration. And very recently, the rise of South Sudan. All of you know the name of South Sudan, the latest country that is also not free from the internal or intra-contradiction and the question of refugees or the displacement. And organization of African state that has talked about the very terms of the refugee. When the concept of refugee as a discipline or as a matter of understanding that generated in the post second world war period, we have found two things. One is the UDHR, Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948. That is very, very significant. That talked about the human rights as well as the basic rights. And most of the countries which have written their democratic constitution in the post-1948 period have seriously addressed all these issues which were enshrined in the UDHR of 1948. And also we have seen the foundation of UNHCR, United Nations High Commission for Refugees, and different declarations were made. Also, the universal declares, also the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, International Covenant uh, on um, uh, Economic and Cultural Rights, 1966, all these were done. In spite of that, that refugee as a problem is growing up. And still now, it is a great problem. And at the same time, you have seen what happened uh, in the post-Arab uh, Spring period. We have seen that there were the fall of the former dictators in different countries. And that led to the series of problems. And that has created the migration of the people. And that is called the ISIS-induced migration that is known to everyone or the forced migration. And Professor Panda has raised a very serious questions that we have to address 
that after the migration of people from one uh, country that is called the Eastern Bengal, those who took shelter in different parts of India, including Northeast India, they are facing another problem, the second or third displacement they are being forced to migrate from that place to another place for separate destination. So we have a lot of things to address, uh, to deal with these issues. The second thing also very important that is called the Dalit. And that is why it is important because this is also a development in the academic discipline that began to grow particularly from the 1960 onward being induced by the American Black Panther movement that is very significant, that has considerable influence on the people of India. And we have seen that there was the growth of the Dalit Panther movement in the 1970s. And in the 1980s, two issues were developed in the academic domain, particularly to deal with the historical uh, model. The subaltern school began to grow to address the issues of the uh, people who are were neglected earlier in the nationalist discourse or in the Marxist discourse, they were not given proper attention. We have found they're trying to get the, uh, bring the uh, peasants and the uh, indigenous people into the forefront of academic discourse by the subaltern school, but they did not address the problem of the Dalits. And however, from the 90s, we have found that Dalit discourse began to grow and they started raising questions against the questions. They started raising questions again, injustice they had faced or they are facing. And one of the important issue of Dalit discourse is to raise questions against the injustice and to share their feelings pain they had received from the society because of their birth in a country or in a situation or in a family or after their migration they had faced in their lives, they started sharing this kind of pain with the people. And in case of Bengal, the experience of the Dalits refugees were not addressed before 2007. I'm repeating before 2007, these were not properly addressed. When in our Jadapur University, being a member of the International Relations Department in those days, we had organized one program called the Experience of the Dalit Refugees, and that was crit criticized many of our colleagues that why you were discussing the Dalit refugees under a separate umbrella. But we have found that the, Dalit, uh, the refugee studies, what they are doing, that is totally different. That started from the 1990s. It's not showing interest to the people, those who had a different kind of background and after their migration to the new land, what kind of atrocities they had faced, what is their experience in their life that has not addressed by the academic scholar under the broader umbrella of refugee studies. So we need to address the question raised by the Dalit refugees. But unfortunately, we did not have sufficient examples to showcase the experience but we have found in bengal after the foundation of the uh, chaturtha dunya as well as the dalit shaitya shangstha from the 1990s particularly from 1994 a number of books stories poetries began to be published in bengali and jatin bala is one of them he is he has written extensively on the Dalit lives, being a, having the uh, direct experience of the displacement, his stories are exceptional. As Professor Panda has uh, said at the beginning that I am born and brought up in particular area of West Bengal, in my own eyes, I have seen two things, that those who have migrated from uh, the uh, Eastern Bengal, particularly during the liberation war, what kind of electricity they had faced and how they have settled, at the same time, I have seen the transnational migration from, from two other places. One is from Northeast India that has expelled a considerable number of people and two camps I have written uh, that is going to be published in the next year, 2022. Two camps are open. These camps are still there. 
these camps were filled with the people, those who migrated from Asham, particularly from 1979 to 1985. All of you know that 1979 uh, marked to the beginning of the Asham movement with the expulsion of the foreigners called the Bideshi Khedha, and that continued up to 1985. And all of you know the NRC issue or the question of CAA, the CAA of 1986 is very much significant than the CAA that you have seen just two years back in 19, 2019. It is more important, the CAA of 1986 is more important because that was amended in 1985, December 1985, in order to address the Asham Accord signed by the then Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi and the people involved in the Asham movement. The 1985 Accord has given the option for exercising certain issues like IMDT, uh, Foreign um, Tribunal Act or other things. And that had contributed eventually to the adoption of this kind of act in the very uh, beginning of this 21st century in Asham. But I have seen that the people, they got back. At the same time, in the same year, in 1985, another neighboring country of India, that is called Bhutan, it had expelled, try to imagine, it had expelled 10% of its total population from that country. 10% of total population have been expelled from that country. Those who were the people, those who migrated from Nepal or some parts of India the Nepali speaking people because of the act of 1985 called the new citizenship act that led to the expulsion of these people and their issues were not addressed anywhere. Anyway, I have personally seen how, what kind of problem they had seen. So apart from the people, those who migrated from Eastern Bengal or Bangladesh later on, also West Bengal is receiving is a host state of India from Asham or Northeast India as well as from the neighboring country called Bhutan that has received. Anyway, so we can discuss all these things, but here we have found the stories what uh, have been translated into English by the prominent scholars and edited by um, Professor Sharangi is an excellent one. And uh, we have already introduced in the academic domain, the students as well as the scholars, they are enjoying and they are getting this uh, taste of this literature or the life that have been reflected here uh, because many of them do not know or uh, the Bengali language when it have been, this has been translated into English, they are getting the information. So this work has fulfilled the lacuna that we are looking for that, that we do not have sufficient examples to bring the Dalit refugees under the separate category. What was a complaint of the Dalit refugee studies in the beginning of the 21st century that we can now raise the point that we have this kind of works, not only in Bengali, but also in the English language, uh, which is now uh, popular, not only in India, but also other parts of the world. So once again, I uh, convey my sincere gratitude to organizer, particularly the editor and the translator, and I, my um, humble respect to the author who is present here, Jatin Bala. And uh, I had a discussion with him over telephone in Bengali. So I think uh, his, his contribution would be analyzed in future with the critical academic eyes by the upcoming scholars. With this word, I like to stop. And uh, thank you very much for organizing this uh, program so that uh, we can reach with this example too large number of audience. Now, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, you placed the book in a very wide crux of debate, intellectual scholarship and debate on the problems of borders, refugees, nationhood. And you outlined that these problems uh, have to be studied in a larger geographical, cultural, and historical perspective. And I think that you have uh, added very, very valuable dimensions to scholars who will be reading this book in the days to come. Thank you very, very much for uh, this wonderful uh, talk and for, for illuminating this book so beautifully. Uh, we move over to our next speaker, who is Dr. R. Meghna Rao from the Department of English, Kakatiya University, also a Board of Studies member of the University of Warangal. We are very grateful that she has consented to be with us here today and to speak on the book. Over to you, Meghna, ma'am. Uh, 
Yeah, thank you, Basundra, ma'am. It was a nice, uh, nice, warm welcome on your behalf. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I really feel uh, privileged and honored today to be with you and be a part of this wonderful program of book inauguration. And uh, at the outset, I would like to give my due respects to the author, Jitin Bala, sir, and the editor who has uh, uh, very uh, affectionately spoke to me over the phone call and uh, made a request and he also called me in the morning and uh, i also i am obliged to you sir you are really very uh, polite and uh, lovable person jatin bala sir and editor Sar jaydeep sarangi sir and invited speakers roop k barma J jawadpur university and s armstrong madras university and uh, nidhya s choudhury assam university and one of the translator, Nishi Faluguna, who is uh, who has translated the story Poison Wound. So a very good evening to one and all who all are present here in this platform. I would like to start my words about the book with a small quote by Ikchat Teli. I quote, the, the awakening of consciousness is the next evolutionary step for mankind. So when I read the book, I really felt very happy that this is an awakening of consciousness and it is the next evolutionary step for all the scholars as well as the people who read this book. If every day is an awakening, you will never grow old. You will just keep growing. I'm immensely honored and overwhelmed to be a part of this particular program. And I have read this revised edition of this collection of stories by eminent Jatin Balagaru, an award-winning Bengali Dalit writer, edited by Jaydeep Sarangi, sir. Stories of Social Awakening, Reflections of Dalit Refugee Lives of Bengali is a book which elaborates a memorable collection of the 14 short stories and gives cheap insights into the society on various as aspects of Dalit refugee experiences in West Bengal. This original Bengali book translated into English by eminent group of translators and edited by Jadip Sarangi Garu is a book of social awakening stories which has its deep roots into the sufferings and stereotypical present representation of Dalits and refugees. This book is the representation of Jatin Bala's life, personal, personal experiences as a Dalit refugee, where the protagonist moves back and front and in between I and we. In his interview with Sarangi sir, Jatin Bala states, I quote, I write about the life that I have lived for all these years of experience of my life. Most of the characters appearing in my stories and novels or people I have met at some part or the other. Their pain and their sorrow, the problems in their day-to-day -day life, their attempt to bring about social uplift happens to be the subject matter of my works from page number 207, I unquote. He also states that literature is the finest manifestation of the subtle sensibilities of mankind. It has always played a significant role in bringing about a paradigm shift in society. So through by stories, Jatin Bala haunts to throw some light on the problems faced by the Dalit Bengali refugee and make a change in the mindset of the reader. Dalit writers are in a great of dignity. They write with a vision and a cause. Dalit literature stands for humanitarianism, linguistic directness, and plurality. It's a literary movement for social change. And Dalit Panthers are optimistic of social reforms. It is the obligation of the author to produce a book of art that bears impression of his tremendous life force that the mark of his social consciousness as well as the imprint of which he lives. While I was reading the first story, the story of social consciousness translated by Sujana Benerji, the character Jahar Shankar was a good man with compassionate and richest soul. He asserted the greatest, he asserted 
the greatest enemy of our country is religion and caste human beings are not allowed to lead a free life like the ox trotting around an oil press so i forget i fight against inequalities meted out in the name of caste and religion but at the end of the story we could found jahar sharkar wanderer and a madman who is still limping across the roads of india i really felt very bad when i read the st- uh, ending lines of the first story the fourth story the man called ratan translated by deepam chakravarti if i am not wrong i have i, ha- I happened to meet him he is one of the translator and i happened to meet him in the central university during my refresher course the protagonist namha ratan dalia always maintains uniqueness of his nature being a carpenter was humiliated by his co-workers and his contractor gopal chatterji but in spite of all his humiliation he serves saves gopal chatterji's life at the end of the story when gopal offers him money for saving his life ratan says i quote then you really think that i have saved your priceless life simply for money i spit on your prize there are there are four base people as men the namahas or for far above this you cannot slide them with the lure of money it was taken from page number 70 ratan clearly depicts humanity of man cannot be brought bought with money and in the story poisonous wound translated by nishi uh, who is uh, one of the translator who is present here that's why i have selected this story to read it out to some extent the main story roams around the character nikhil mondol who was a sacrificial victim of communal rights of partition of the diversion of bengali and independence of india he became an uh, hawker in order to move around in search of his wife and son he says i quote even today when i think of my wife and son the wounds within me become raw within my being the pus the blood and the other fluids keep keep falling and continuously falling my heart ached when i went through the stories each story stands different on it, on its own and has a social awakening thought in it i feel honored on my uh, releasing this book and at this juncture i would like to thank jaydeep sarangi garu because personally he has called me many times and from my bottom of my heart i am uh, uh, for giving me a chance to be a part of this wonderful program thank you sir thank you one and all and thank you very much thank you so much thank you megha ma'am for throwing light on these uh, beautiful stories as a reader as a scholar as a critic and for uh, raising you know uh, or for rather bringing into the discussion some of the most memorable characters that are part of the world of stories of social awakening we have been having a wonderful discussion and uh, i would like to read from professor roop kumar's uh, endorsement for the book which says that it the book not only has illustrated the untold suffering and struggle of the victims of the partition of bengal but also constructed a bridge between partition historiography and struggle for existence of the dalits the editor of this compilation of stories has done an excellent work to understand the causative factors of forced migration and the undercurrent of the post partition dalit lives of bengal uh professor uh, omio panda who is the vice chancellor and who in his inaugural address uh, to the program had spoken about this repeated otherization of a certain section of the population and uh, we can easily relate this to the stories that have resurfaced here with uh, megna ma'am's discussions and we hope that these will be important issues that scholars will handle when they read this collection Uh, we would next like to invite uh, one of our 
very, very uh, loved speakers, Dr. Sudhir Nikam, Professor of English, BNN College, Mumbai University, also Chairperson of the Board of Studies, Mumbai University, who has very generously consented to join us here today. Over to you, Sudhir, sir. Thank you, madam. Uh, it's my great privilege to address the gathering uh, for the launch of second edition of Stories of Social Awakening, Reflections of uh, Dalit Refugee Lives on Bengal, uh, which is being translated by uh, a number of uh, reputed translators academicians and uh, edited by my dear friend, Professor Jaydeep Sarangi. So as rightly pointed out by Professor Sarangi in his inaugural address, uh, these stories are uh, stories of the voices of the unheard. So whenever uh, we uh, come across by the term refugee, in a context of literature, it is viewed in a different way. And the way it is interpreted uh, in other contexts, like uh, uh, historical sense or anthropological sense, it has a different context. So this gathering is a gathering of academicians uh, who have come together in order to have a, a dialogue and interaction or to uh, build a discourse that would give new direction to refugee studies as well as Dalit studies. So when we talk about Dalit studies, uh, Bengali Dalit study is quite uh, neglected. Uh, it also needs to be uh, bring into the forefront. Professor Jaydeep Sarangi in his in introductory remark has uh, created a kind of uh, background and started the ball uh, rolling. Professor Panda, Honorable Vice Chancellor uh, has uh, in his uh, inaugural he has introduced us with the social reality of uh, Dalit refugees, especially in uh, eastern part of Bengal, and the uh, social facts, the illustrations, and the uh, number of uh, details he has introduced to us. Professor Rup Kumar Burman, he has made an excellent uh, review of the book. Not just that, but he has also uh, introduced us the historical and anthropological facts about uh, refugees, Dalits, and refugee studies. Not just this, but also Professor uh, Rup Kumar Burman has uh, clearly defined uh, the scope for refugee studies, the displacement as uh, of the Dalits, and uh, refugee studies as a, an academic discipline, and how. It has a great scope, especially in India. In Western countries, uh, we find there are so many university departments which are having a serious uh, academic programs, serious academic projects on refugee studies. But even in India, they need to have uh, special chairs, special uh, departments to do study of uh, refugee studies with reference to especially uh, Dalit uh, population. So there are uh, many violations of human rights. There are, he, uh, Professor uh, Berman has also introduced us uh, with uh, various provisions of international laws, acts for the refugees. So thank you, Professor uh, Rup Kumar Berman for uh, enlightening us, especially the teachers of literature uh, from a very uh, different and interdisciplinary perspective because these are the facts which we are not uh, aware of. Uh, though uh, uh, 21st century is a century of interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary studies, where um, academicians from uh, different faculties, different subjects should come together and uh, develop a kind of discourse. So Professor Meghna Rao from um, uh, Warangal, uh, Kakhtia University Warangal, she has uh, to put her, put her uh, uh, speech in a nutshell she has simply uh, indicated the awakening of consciousness. So once you are awake, once your consciousness is awake, awakened, then definitely uh, the directions will be changed. So uh, 
let me uh, salute uh, mr honorable din bala who has himself experienced who has himself experienced uh, refugee uh, experience and uh, how migration creates a trauma on the refugees especially the dalit refugees who he migrated uh, from east pakistan to west bengal in 1954 and he has chronicled lives of the refugees so 14 short stories are 14 platforms where um, uh, honorable mr jatin bala has tried to project the narratives the pains uh, the agonies the sufferings that uh, various uh, characters various uh, situations are depicted in the book so these stories are stories of truth to put it in a nutshell so uh, mr jatin bala has done nothing he has simply presented before us the truth truth and only truth and which is a very dark side of the refugees so uh, i am sure that uh, the coming years will definitely pay special attention on uh, the work uh, which is being translated by many authors and edited by professor jaydeep sarangi because this is one of the uh, uh, emerging areas which has a great scope especially in india so there is a struggle for survival uh, there is a conflict between visibility and invisibility survival and death through which all these characters uh, go through so these stories have uh, simply a universal appeal so translator uh, i should appreciate all the translators because uh, translating a text is uh, a challenging task so uh, a translator has always uh, uh, to remain conscious in order to keep the flavor of the original author so uh, as far as uh, uh, i am concerned i do not know bengali but uh, while going through the stories uh, it gives a feeling as if we uh, i am not reading translated stories but original stories so uh, here uh, lies the success of the translators so these are uh, the unheard stories of partition lives so part when we talk about partition we talk only about uh, india pakistan uh, partition and in this partition uh, the lives of the dalits the downtrodden the underdogs is uh, rarely talked about so this is uh, the significant aspect of this short stories where uh, the dalits and the uh, marginalized class and castes are uh, being given justice so uh, to put to put uh, my conclusion in one uh, statement in words of professor jaydeep sarangi the book is a book of social cause thank you thanks a lot thank you professor nikam you. for talking about the book and for particularly talking about the process of translation and how the 14 wonderful translators uh, one of whom will read out her translations uh, dr nishi pulugurtha uh, dr barnini mukherjee another of the translators is also with us today as part of the audience and we really salute uh, these translators who have been able to put across these narratives to us because as uh, professor rupkumar barman was pointing out you know this has uh, remedied a basic lacune in sociological research these narratives needed to be uh, you know they, they needed to come out they needed to be spoken about uh, these were stories that needed to be documented they are important testimonials for a very troubling and very haunting period of history that remains with us today as uh, professor amir panda also mentioned so uh, we really can uh you know we really can understand the depth of scholarship and uh, epistemological sincerity that this book brings with it uh, we are very happy and grateful that uh, professor s armstrong has been able to join us uh, professor s armstrong is the professor and head department of english madras university uh, and he was belated uh, he was uh, on a flight and he has uh, made it to us and we are extremely grateful for his presence over to you sir thank you thank you so much so i am so happy to be part of this uh, book discussion and the book launch so i thank uh, 
Jaydeep Sarangi for making uh, all these arrangements. I'm very, I'm extremely sorry <laughs> that I was not able to uh, join all of you on time. So, can, can you please give me two minutes? Uh, just uh, you know, take my car and then I'll give me two sure, minutes. Sure, yeah. sure, 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 sure. So, meanwhile, uh, Bashudara, you can uh, announce the thing. Yes, yes. So, uh, you know, we were having this and we are uh, very garrulous people. We continuously keep on talking uh, given an opportunity. And uh, everybody has been appreciating these stories. And I wanted to mention that uh, the autobiography of uh, Jatin Bala, Shikor Chera Jibor, is in translation in English uh, by Professor Sarangi. It's going to appear from Sahitya Academy uh, New Delhi very soon. And we hope that that will be another very significant resource that will throw light on the uh, autobiographical complexity that these stories have. Uh, we will be having Nishi Ma'am who will read out a story and also if possible Nishi Ma'am to talk about the process of translation, uh, how arduous or how challenging it has been translating stories uh, which are rooted in an experientiality that not all of us have access to. So we would also like to hear uh, after Professor Armstrong has spoken, we would like to hear from you about this process of translation. Uh, we are very grateful for the number of scholars who have joined us today. We also have Professor Sakat Banerjee, who has joined us from uh, Asan Don Bosco University, Guwahati. Uh, we are very grateful that he has made it to this occasion. Uh, we have Professor Anthony Sami from Laila College. If, if he can speak, uh, speak for a couple of minutes before uh, Armstrong joins. Yes, sir. Welcome, sir. Yeah. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Dr. Yes. Jaydeep. Uh, uh, it's actually a pleasant uh, surprise uh, in the form of an invitation. Uh, I, you know, happy to congratulate all of you because though I am not ready to talk about uh, the book uh, Stories of a Social Awakening, the book is with me right now because you sent me the book and I am just glancing through also right now. As uh, I am listening to, uh, you know, the most of the speakers just now, Sudhir, Dr. Sudhir Nikim uh, spoke fantastically and he said, uh, truth, nothing but the truth, you know, that comment really, uh, you know, attracted uh, uh, me to say a few words about, uh, you know, each one of the uh, those speakers. I know Dr. Armstrong. And uh, I, I, I know Dr. Nikim and, uh, of course, uh, the editor of the book, uh, 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 Dr. Jaydeep. And the author of the book, Jatin Bala, I have heard and uh, so much, you know, uh, I am listening to uh, um, uh, about uh, him. Uh, definitely, it is a kind of a, a path-breaking yeah, book, I would say, because uh, this is the... Uh, trend of uh, you know the 21st century to give identity to the people who are unheard who have uh, uh, no voice in fact we you know we are giving a voice to the voiceless so definitely this is the need of the hour and right now i am just thinking that i should invite uh, the author jatin bala and editor uh, jaydeep and even uh, uh, Dr. Sudhir and the, the ma'am who spoke a little earlier, you know, from Warangal, uh, to have a kind of, uh, say, um, uh, you know, orientation even to Loyola College staff members so that we become aware of uh, the kind of uh, new trends that, you know, we need to incorporate in our syllabi. So we are right now in the process of restructuring our uh, post graduation program. And uh, we would like to listen to you. Uh, and the, the, I'm very happy that I have uh, joined this program today. Um, and it, it gives me a kind of, uh, you know, reiteration that we should move forward in syllabus updation uh, in terms of, you know, uh, lit uh, 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 including literatures of, you know, this sort. You know, we have been thinking about only the, uh, classical canonical literature and all those representative literatures both from England, America and uh, India and even Asia at large. But then uh, there are uh, so much of uh, perspectives that 
have not yet been explored within India, within each states of India that are very, very important and we need to pay attention to those aspects. And I'm sure definitely, uh, you know, this is going to be the uh, uh, area of research. In fact, I have requested one of my research scholars who is from the uh, Northeast. He is from Nohaland. His name is uh, Ketoka Chishi and he is right now listening to all of you. So uh, this is the uh, you know, area we have to really um, you know, explore and then uh, read a lot and so on. So th I would like to congratulate the editor, uh, Dr. Jaydeep, who was uh, constantly in touch with me, even sent me both uh, the ebook and also the uh, hot copy to me and initiating uh, me to the uh, important area of uh, literature. Okay. So uh, thank you, Professor, for the opportunity given to me right now. Uh, right now, I am in the position of only congratulating the author, Majatin Bala, sir, and then uh, the editor and all the speakers. And uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. And uh, I'm sure Dr. Armstrong, a good friend of mine, and in fact, uh, he was the uh, a student of my first batch as a teacher in St. Joseph's College. I'm very, very happy that I am amidst uh, all my friends uh, and, uh, uh, you know, teachers, fellow teachers and so on. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, congratulations once again for uh, giving, uh, you know, all of us uh, the kind of platform to listen to uh, newer perspectives of literature in, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the 21st century. Thank you. Thank you for the thank opportunity, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, and thank you. And uh, wonderful to listen to you. And uh, before we go to uh, Professor Armstrong, who is a very good friend for a long, long time with, uh, with all of us, and uh, uh, more than two decades, I think, uh, for 20 years and counting. And before that, just one announcement that uh, we have a library, New Alipur College Library. The librarian, madam, is here, Shumona. And, uh, we have uh, an extensive resource uh, for you know, Dalit studies. We have a special collection for Dalit studies. And I think uh, our library and madam is so energetic and she has collected. And we have got uh, uh, enormous number of collections on Dalit studies. So anybody working on Dalit studies can come to for free use of the library of New Alipur College. And uh, in the, we are also in the process of collaborating with, uh, with the library of uh, the research library of Dalit section of in, um, in East Anglia University, UK. And so our library and madam is here. Uh, Shumona, hello. Shumona, hello. Uh, Shumona, madam, our library and madam is here and our library is collaborating with East Anglia, State University of East Anglia, UK, and we are jointly organizing the database for Dalit studies. Uh, in India. We need also cooperation and collaboration from the south and the northern part and western part so that we have a consortium on database of Dalit writings and we have a collection, special section of Dalit studies, anybody working on Dalit studies uh, can visit the library and the uh, library and madam is here Shumana, for, uh, for one minute yeah. Shumana, if you can say uh, thank you sir uh, it's been great pleasure to attend this uh, really an interesting event and i am uh, i'm i must say that that it was uh, uh, an effort from the part of our principal sir dr jordip sharangi we are able to uh, hold a collection of Dalit studies in our library and it is at the nascent stage right now but uh, we are looking forward to more collection and more collaboration and so that it can be a really research hub for the uh, who are interested in such kind of uh, work and um, thank you sir once again uh, I uh, I'm gonna hand over it, the session to you Thank you so much and our library is almost our syllabus is totally digitized so i must congratulate my library and ma'am present here in the library it's fully Thank advanced you, that she has met over to uh Pashudhara for professor armstrong's speech we are all eagerly waiting yeah. 
Yes, uh, if Professor Armstrong is ready, we would be very grateful to have him speak to us. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for the invitation. So I'm very much uh, happy to be associated with this uh, event. Uh, I would like to mention that Antonio Navarro, Tejero, uh, in his foreword, mentioned about uh, Dr. Ambedkar. Uh, that, that, that is a good beginning. Uh, the foreword is well presented. And I would like to remind all of you uh, how Dr. Ambedkar was elected to the Constituent Assembly to frame the Constitution of India. Uh, you know, I would like to be, I'd like to remember uh, Mr. Uh, um, Mr. Mandel, uh, who was uh, responsible for making Ambedkar to be elected from the West Bengal Assembly. Jogen Mandel, Mr. Jogen Mandel, yes. Thank you. Yes, Jogendra Nath Mandal, correct? Uh, correct? Jogendra yes, Nath yes, Mandal. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, on uh, June 29, 1946, okay, uh, Dr. Ambedkar reached Calcutta uh, on this day to discuss the election issue. If the West Bengal Assembly uh, would have failed to elect Dr. Ambedkar, we would not have a very good constitution for the India. So we are all grateful to the West Bengal uh, for uh, making Ambedkar as one of the important uh, stalwarts to frame this constitution. Many of you may not know the Congress party uh, you know, failed to uh, field Dr. Ambedkar and they, they also prevented him in, you know, in not uh, you know, to be elected uh, in the uh, to the Constituent Assembly, correct? So in that way, the state of West Bengal contributed a lot uh, to the vision of uh, New India. In that connection, uh, I thank uh, uh, Antonio Navarro for mentioning Dr. Ambedkar uh, appropriately uh, in his foreword. So the second important, uh, you know, positive note about the collection is that there are two things that we have to remember. Number one, uh, the, the stories are not only stories of uh, the Dalits, but uh, refugee, you know, Dalits as refugees is one of the important, uh, you know, hallmarks of this book because we have Dalit literature in India. But uh, the, the stories uh, translated by Sarangi from Bala's uh, Bengali writings uh, are known for triple displacement. You know, they are already displaced. They are internally displaced. And there is also uh, an external uh, displacement. When you read the stories, uh, you will come to know the kind of... Uh, you know, uh, we normally in India we discuss caste and gender and you know caste and uh, discrimination, but caste and migration is a broader topic as Nigam rightly pointed out. The caste and migration uh, is very very important uh, topic that we have to explore. Not only uh, in India, you know, outside India also we have lot of uh, people moved. Uh, you know, uh, outside the India, even from Tamil Nadu also, we have a lot of uh, migration to South Africa and also uh, Philippines and also to Sri Lanka and Malaysia, correct? So th th this kind of caste and migration uh, is a good area and where the, the book is a kind of uh, camera that catches the important snapshots of issues related to migration and Dalit issues. Okay, I would like to highlight uh, my address uh, by taking only one story. Uh, the story uh, appears in chapter six of this book, Akaipur in Frames, uh, from pages 90 to uh, 98, translated by Somarai. You know, there is a village, uh, Akaipur, and we have one uh, Durga temple. 
and which is uh, protected by the brahmins and this is uh, one of the important uh, you know uh, temple that nobody should enter you know this temple is located uh, very closer to the uh, dalis where kids play and uh, people also watch the kids are playing what happened in the story uh, is there is one rajan garami again a migrant laborer and his wife basona garami is there and they have uh, sunita who is six months old daughter okay so sunita uh, you know uh, you know soiled the veranda in the temple so this is the issue and there is one rampada misra uh his three sons you know he ill treated uh, bazona and then you know the, they poured the hot doll on the heads of uh, uh, you know bazona and her young very young baby uh, sunita and that resulted in commotion you know the story is presented in such a way Uh, that rampada misra wants the baby to be sacrificed in front of the temple and that dirty place has to be washed with her blood this is the uh, you know plea made by rampada misra but uh, you know basona pleads you know she was very very young is a very young baby that she does not know this and it does not know what is purity and what is pollution but what happened is you know there is a lot of commotion the story is presented in such a way uh, that there are um, there is a violence and the violence uh, we can say it started uh, from the physical violence and it goes to the psychological violence and ends in an epistemic violence where they 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 got uh, you know liberation because you see uh, the kind of unity of the dalis is presented in the story uh, the character uh, bazona uh, you know makes me to remind uh, the character uh, in bama's short story ponutai where ponutai is an independent uh, you know dalit women though dalit women is considered to be a dalit among dalits but here basona's voice is very higher than ponutai because where she was able to uh, sensitize men also so that is one of the important uh, uh hall marks in this sh- short story the reason here is uh as bama rightly pointed out translation of dalit literature is a linguistic revolution according to bama so in that connection i would like to connect uh with the voice of uh, bazona with many uh, you know uh, characters and also theories uh, you know that we are all familiar with starting with uh, the consciousness consciousness uh, raising uh, results in uh, you know four types of consciousness i can see uh, in the efforts made by basona number one social consciousness see basona was able to sensitize men and women to collectively struggle that there is an inequality <laughs> of injustice in this village and also uh, there is a kind of uh, collective no, protest that consciousness that is, that is. this is very important because the story is presented in a very positive way that basona was able to inspire men and young boys to protest against the uh, injustice made by uh, rampada misra acha right so it also reminds us uh to think about uh, dubois consciousness the double consciousness that he spoke about uh you know to present the uh, uh, african american struggle and african american uh, you know uh, structure uh not only this uh, when you when you read this short story it will definitely take you to uh, connect uh, barbara harlow also who has uh, Uh, presented uh, a, a type book title resistance literature correct so this resistance literature uh, you know it is this short story connects many theories uh, that barbara presents in her book uh, resistance literature 
it also uh, takes me to uh, think about weapons of the week uh, authored by james s k c scott an american uh, anthropologist who uh, has a field visit and then he researched on the laboring classes uh, you know the methods of protest and all these things so the protest element uh, is very important when you read the short story uh, you know you will come to know it starts from a verbal protest it moves towards the physical protest but it ends in an intellectual protest because you know they are going to uh, you know like shake the conscience of ram uh, the the, 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 uh, the uh, ram pada misra and his three sons uh, dinesh uh, sudhir and dinesh uh, uh, who uh, you know like punished uh, bazona and her baby not only that uh, the story uh, it might be a story written in eight or nine pages uh, but it reminds me of the, the greater uh, liberty movements uh, for you know, temple entry movements in india uh, a lot of uh, temple entry movements in india uh, that we are all familiar with uh, one in madurai we had uh, uh, in 16 on 16th may 1890 we had one vaidyanatha iyer he was also known as madurai vaidyanatha iyer Ayer was an Indian activist and politician and freedom fighter. He spearheaded the temple entry movement in Madras presidency in 1939. The second temple entry movement is also called the temple entry Procl- proclamation was issued by Maharaja Chitra Thirunal Balarama Verma on November 12, 1936. uh the law was called the proclamation abolished the ban on the so called low caste people or avarnas from entering hindu temples in the uh, princely state of travancore now part of kerala the third important uh, movement is in the 20th century kerala sri narayana guru led a social reform uh, movement that called for Uh, allowing people of lower caste entry into state operated temples correct uh, and also it reminds me of vaiko movement the savarna procession of uh, about 500 men set foot from vaiko on 1st november 1924 under the leadership of uh, mannathu padmanabhan the unquestioned leader of the nayar uh, service society the final one is uh, kalaram temple entry movement initiated by dr b r ambedkar on 2nd march 1930 ambedkar led a protest outside the temple okay so this short story remains us about the four temple entry movements uh, for the dalits uh, in india and also uh, you know as a protest uh, element uh, when you read the story you will be surprised to note that protest literature as zin is that i double and describe you know you know the protest initiated by bazona uh, reminds me to uh, quote this i quote zin any form of communication that engages social consciousness and may move someone to action okay so the you know the social consciousness created by bazona in this short story moved not only her but she inspired men and boys uh, you know to move uh, into an action for liberation okay and also uh, stories like uh, uh, this uh, will may shock us into action by informing us of problems we were unaware of like the work of Uh, we also we are all familiar with Upton Sinclair or Rachel Carson, uh, you know, who are all familiar with these protest uh, writings. Okay, so this story refers to uh, and also connects uh, many uh, stories in this world to address real social political issues and express objection against them, particularly Africans having uh, you know they lost their pride through slavery and colonialism. whereas in india bazona remains all of us 
about the the double disposition and also the kind of uh, you know discrimination and injustice done for dalit women who are considered to be the dalit among dalits okay uh, the second important uh, element that i have noted in the short story is the protest initiated by uh, bazona uh, seeks a threefold objective for the entire dalit writings number 1 Uh, to testify uh, to indic and to seek redress for the agony uh, initiated by uh, the higher caste uh, men in this world she also attacks the double patriarchy uh, not only the dalit men and also the upper caste uh, men uh, in the form of uh, you know ram uh, ram prasad mishra so when when you read the uh, story you know the, the language uh, is presented in such a way uh, you know yes i'm just winding up professor i'm winding up ram prasad mishra is presented deliberately in in the animal imagery okay when you read the story uh, continuously animal imagery is employed to express his body language uh, to to express his actions and also his his compared to wolf okay uh, mm. wolf is one of the important literary symbols in this world because you know wolf changes uh, you know it, it very often changes its uh, Uh, uh you know uh, identity right similarly uh, he is also compared to snake uh, he and his three sons are compared to the poisonous fangs of snakes you know in the, in the indian society the, the author bala is very brilliantly presents that caste uh, discrimination uh, you know is compared to the the poison of the snake okay and we also have one story poisoned uh, you know uh, you know poisoned bread is a popular collection we have this book also carries one one story connected with poison okay the next important symbol that i have come across in the story is fire you know from starting from uh, you know uh, the entire story from the beginning and up to the end Uh, the symbol fire uh, is employed very brilliantly the bazonas anger uh, you know the dalit men in you know, a gathering and their uh, pride you know everything is compared to a fire and in one place uh, they are also compared to an inferno okay when they try to protest uh, and then they wanted to destroy uh, you know the misra's family in this village okay i would like to wind up uh, with uh, one of the saddest uh, uh, you know incident that uh, happened in tamil nadu in 1969 december 25th we are all waiting for christmas but we we don't have christmas because we always remember when many incident uh, in tanjavur district where 49 dalit laborers were burnt alive okay the fire symbol always connect me to think about when many incident that massacred uh, 49 dalits you know alive in the fire uh, on december 25 uh, 25 1969 okay so uh, the the short story opens up lot of discussions uh, to connect to compare to contrast many stories of injustice around the world thank you so much uh, thanks for the opportunity uh sarangit thank you so much thank you thank you so much for you are traveling to madurai mm. from chennai and uh, for giving good. your precious time thank you so much armstrong ji for my thank you from the core of my heart thank you thank you professor armstrong it was a very very uh, incisive commentary on not just one story but on the constellation of stories as a whole you talked about so many significant motives 
And most importantly, you used one story to talk about the various forms of violences that the text justifiably brings out, the linguistic violence, the psychological violence, the physical violence, the epistemic violence. And I think that this has served the book wonderfully well. Thank you very much for your commitment to this particular launch. Uh, as Jadeep sir mentioned, you are traveling. And uh, it was very obvious that you had to tax yourself to be a part of this evening today. Thank you very much. Uh, we move over to the next uh, session of the translation of the uh, book launch. We are extremely uh, sorry that one of our speakers, Professor Anind Syam, could not join us because uh, there has been a sad demise in his family and he had to attend to that. And we move over, therefore, to one of our translators, uh, Professor of English, Dr. Nishipulu Gurtha, who has translated the story, Poisonous Wound. And I would invite her to read from her translation as also to comment on the process of translation that uh, inspired her to take this up and also to do justice to this fabulous story. Over to you, Nishiti. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be part of this evening. And I must uh, say at the outset that this is the first time that I have translated and uh, I was much taken up with the idea of Joydeep's faith in me because he was sure that I would uh, be able to do it. And I took it up as a challenge. And I'm, I'm really glad that I took it up because uh, Jyotin Babu's story is something which has moved me a lot. Um, the historical, I, I know the historical background. I have read it. But when I was reading the story, uh, Bishakto Khoto, that is the original title in Bangla, when I was reading the story, I mean, um, I found it, a, a, it was a very difficult task, difficult in the sense that it was very painful, difficult in that sense, uh, because of the kind of incidents that uh, the short story talks about. Uh, but um, I, I really... Uh, uh, I found the way in which he wrote the style that uh, Jyotin Babu wrote was something which did not, which was very easy for me to understand and do the translation. So I did not have much problems with the translation, given the fact that this is the first time I was doing uh, a translation from Bangla to English. So I, I really uh, like the way that he wrote the Bangla text. There is a simplicity, there is a starkness. Uh, which kind of hits out and i think it is because of the simplicity and the starkness that um, the the very gravitas of the short story the very difficult scenario that this short story uh, brings out in the lives of of the refugees who are moved here and there throughout constantly and who lose almost everything i think that is because of the way in which jyotin babu uses the language uh, that it comes out uh, so um, uh, so easily. And I'm so glad that I agreed to do the translation because it is because of that that I got to read uh, Jyotin Babu's work. And, I, and I'm really, um, sh I'm sure that this English translation will uh, make Jyotin Babu's work available to a larger audience, which of course is the purpose of this translation. Um, a lot has been said about the work, so I would just uh, like to begin reading the short story, and I'll just read a little bit of it. Um, it uh, being, I translated it as Poisonous Wound. Political leaders call Nikhil Mondol an inf infiltrator. They hate him, torture and neglect him, ridicule him. They even call him a terrorist. Nikhil Mondol keeps mum and bears it all. He does not protest. He does not even get angry at all this. He keeps his head lowered and leaves. Like a thief, he hides and lives on in this country. To satiate his hunger, he goes along the same paths, sells his wares. After all, he's a beggar without a country. One who landed up here after independence, a refugee. And that is why all this festers on in Nikhil Mondol's being. It is this that flows through his veins that takes Nikhil Mondol to the village where he was born, Machna Modhupur. The memories that have remained secure come alive. 
in the open front courtyard in that house in Machna Modupur near the Tulshi plant were two bokul trees. The courtyard would be full of flowers every morning. Each time he is reminded of the home left behind. Even to this day, Nikhil Mondol can almost smell those flowers. It is then that his entire being shivers in pain and suffering. He feels the presence of his wife and children. Nikhil Mondol is able to recollect every moment of days gone by. In the air at that time, two words floated everywhere, independence and partition. Another frightening word joined these two words, riot. Riots of the communal kind that spread from one person to engulf many like raging forest fires. In East Bengal and West Punjab, the fires ranged on. Hindu-Muslim riots, fightings and killings all began. Indiscriminate killings became the order of the day. Heads were just sliced off from human bodies. Streams of blood flowed through his homeland. Mothers, sisters, wives were all raped. The writer shouted Allahu Akbar and slit people's throats. Hindu girls in Pakistan were fewer in number and they were gang raped. Nikhil Mondol's wife and daughter were victims of such riots. He found them after seven days in a half dead state. Both had been raped by the rioters. Nikhil Mondol is unable to tell the story of his life anymore. When he tries to, tears confound him. He shivers in anger, in pain and suffering. He falls down unconscious. After some time, he regains his consciousness. Nikhil Mondol begins to speak. It is difficult to be an outsider in one's own homeland. Each day, injustice and wrongs keep increasing. Without any end in sight, I decided to leave my wife, daughter. I decided to leave with my wife, daughter and son into the unknown, uncertain world. As I walked on, I saw so many people killed in riots, so many women raped. I left them all behind and walked on. After three days and three nights of walking, I crossed the Pakistan-India border and reach Bonga railway station. The beggar's hellish ordeal began. Three days, three nights with no food, no rest. Social workers distributed dry food at Bonga station. That too in limited amounts. People escaping violence crowded all over the place. No water to quench our thirst too. We came this far just with the clothes we were wearing. There was a stench from the bodies of tired people. My wife Shabitri could not stand all this and fell sick. She lost consciousness on the lap of our 12 year old daughter for 12 hours. After three days, government workers began herding the displaced people into train compartments like goats and cows. Fearing for my life, I had to board that compartment along with my wife, daughter and son. From Bonga station, we reached Shialda station. The hellish ordeals increased further. There were no bathrooms in the station and there was not enough food for all. After six days of struggles with no sleep, no food, we were finally called to be taken to a camp, a refugee camp. We boarded trucks that took us to a refugee camp where we dumped, where we were dumped in the darkness of the night in a wilderness in Bordhuman. We spent the night under the sky, me, my sick wife, Shabitri, and my children. When she felt a little better at night, Shabitri screamed 
Take me back, she said. I want to die in my homeland. Why have we been abandoned here in this wilderness by these filthy people? Have we committed crimes that the government is punishing and killing us in this way? Oh God, what has happened to us? Please do something about this. Do something about it. This suffering is too much. I tried to calm Shabitri. Shabitri, please be patient. We need to endure this pain for our children's futures. Please be patient, Shabitri. On my request and consolation, Shabitri calmed down a little. We got to work at dawn. We cleared and set up the tents that the government had given us. By afternoon, the entire area became a refugee camp. Each of us set up a home in a tent. We even got some cash dole or donation from the government employees. With that, I bought something for us to survive. This camp at Palla had an acute shortage of food and fuel. I bore everything at the thought of rehabilitation. After six months, we were not rehabilitated. We were shifted to Mana camp. There were five refugee camps in Mana. Mana, Mana Bhata, Borda Bhata, Kurud, and Naugaon. We found a place in Naugaon camp. We were given a small tent that was very dirty. We'd set up that tent in an open space, our home. All around, it seemed, was an arid wasteland. There were no arrangement for lavatories. An acute scarcity of drinking water. People in the camp waited in queues night and day for hours at a stretch. At times, a lorry fetched us water from far. Some got water, some didn't. Even if our chests burst in thirst, we got no water. Water, food, medicines were all in scarce supply. Soon, pestilence spread. Every day, lots and lots of people began to die. Every day, lorries carried the dead bodies to Borda Hill and piled them there. Then, with a few twigs and some wood, they were lit. Some bodies burned, some remained half burnt. Some didn't burn at all. Wolves and vultures ate these bodies. With so little of dole, no food, people turned into skeletons. The march of death went on. We were soon transported from Naugaon to Malkanjgiri zone. We were herded like cattle again into trucks. On the way, many died in the trucks. Hunger, thirst and the fatigue of the journey took its toll on us. After two days and two nights of travel, we reached the temporary camp at Panadipani. It was called a working camp. A few open rooms in the middle of a wilderness. A tin shed that provided a shelter, no doors and windows. In this group, we were four families. At a time when everyone was struggling against hunger and thirst and fighting death, we alighted from the truck. After the few months stay here, we were again herded off and dumped at a working camp. I'll end here. Bashudhara, I end here. Yes, I think that uh, much of the story has been told and yeah. beautifully so. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nishidi, for uh, translating, for taking up such a beautiful uh, and painful tale for translation and for translating it so evocatively and for reading it so evocatively to the audience today. Thank you very Thank much. You. This is a story which is going to remain with me. Thank you. This is... This is you know, Akono, when I think about yeah, it, yeah. when I think about the story right now, you know, I can feel, uh, you know, 
goosebumps. It gives all one goosebumps. It is, yeah. it is, it is a very, very, very difficult. I mean, it's such a hard, a story of harsh reality. Thank and you, thank you, Joy. I uh, was listening you. intently to you reading this story. I could uh, see him wrapped up in your telltaling of his tale. It was a very, very beautiful moment for the audience also. Thank you very much. Uh, would Jatin sir like to comment something uh, today? Jatin Babu. If he can unmute and if he can talk to us, would it be Jatin possible? Babu, I think uh, Jatin Babu is not well and uh, I think uh, he is a listener today. But yeah, all, all because of him. We, we are assembled here because, because of, of him. him. Because of him. All, all because of him. So we with this... Yeah, we personally, I personally have learned a lot from Jatin Babu, you know, and subtle moments and how sensitive the yes. person is. It's a learning, it's a learning for me, it's a learning for me. Yeah, uh, learning. If all of us who have a copy of the book could, uh, you know, put it in, we could have a picture of the event. Jaritsa, if you could hold your copy of the book. I have to check. Uh, I don't have now. Okay, okay. Thank you. Right, we will take this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Armstrong J. Yes, you have. <laughs> you are traveling <laughs> with the book. Wonderful. The book. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes, thank you so yes. much. Thank you so much, Armstrong Jay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank everybody. You. Thank, you. thank you. And with this, we come to the thank end you. of a very lovely evening. We are very grateful for our colleagues and faculty members from Stella Maris College from Madras Christian College, from Loyola College, who have joined us to uh, listen to these wonderful speakers today. And to formally deliver the vote of thanks, I would call upon the editor himself. Over to you, Jadeep, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, you made the meeting very special. And the book is something uh, very different, as we have already noticed, because we talked about Dalit literature, but uh, this part of Bengal, Dalit refugee literature, and when a refugee is added with the term Dalit, as uh, Professor Armstrong, long-standing friend of mine, has mentioned, it, it, it gives a new dimension to look at the context. And uh, I, I would uh, I humbly submit, there's a great person who has worked on this field is uh, on from the historical perspectives of police diaries, atrocities, migration, and all that, Shekhar Bandhavadhyay. Shekhar Bandhavadhyay has, uh, has a brilliant book on Oxford, or, or through Oxford University Press. And the book uh, is a background study of Bengali part of uh, Dalit partition stories, you know, Namashudra movement and their settlement and all that. So I greatly, I am greatly indebted to Shekhar Babu and who is a professor of uh, University of Wellington, New Zealand. And he is also the director of India Studies Center in New Zealand. And he, he taught at the University of Calcutta, then shifted to New Zealand. And one of the doyens in this particular field. So I am I'm grateful to Shekhar Babu for always getting into it. Uh, coming to this Dalit and refugee, and I think um, more in the process that runs as uh, I think Rup Kumar Babu rightly mentioned, 2006-2007, Professor Minakshi Mukherjee in EPW first wrote about, is there something called Bangla Dalit writing? And that uh, is the Gangotri of uh, the studies. And, uh, you know, I, I have a very interesting account to tell you all. When I organized a seminar at Indumoti Shabadriyo Jadavpur University, Possibly that is the recorded as the first largest uh, conference on Dalit discourse in Bengal. And uh, the, during these Marxist regime at the time. And, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, I had to take a, a Herculean task to organize. I was teaching in a different college at that time. I was not a principal that time. I was teaching in a different college. and uh, But uh, that is not far away from Jadapur University, Jad Jogesh Chandra Chaudhuri College. But I remember how things were not, uh, very, uh, not um, well during that time to organize a conference in Dalit studies in, in Bengal. 
and uh, and there are several revels of operations several revels of machinery is to stop there is nothing called dalit in bengal and all all uh, dalit writers from all over india they came and they were there all and all bengali dalit writers were there that was one of the interface between bengali dalit writers dalit activists i would say with the activists from other part of india and when we talk about dalit literature so the d is here we talk about uh, uh, maharashtra we talk about uh, uh, tamil nadu we talk about gujarat we talk about kerala we in uh, bengali is a bit silent but last 10 15 years uh, are is the part where translations are going on and bengali dalit literature is more than 100 years old there's a beautiful book by Manohar Mauli Vishyas, where he has documented 100 years of Bangla Dalit history, Bangla Dalit literary history. There's a beautiful book. And uh, Bengali Dalit writing is really a big casket of knowledge, uh, really a big casket of knowledge. And uh, because it is something very special, because it adds uh, a refugee parameter also. You know. And uh, when we look into the refugee discourse and refugee politics, and there is politics from the central government that I was hinting at, and Shekhar Babu's book uh, is, is I, my credit to, credit goes to Shekhar Babu's in a long historical survey over a period of time, and uh, the documents that uh, he mentions, and the journals he mentions, and the magazines he mentions, and the, the diaries. Diaries means the police diaries that he mentions, which are important documents. And uh, Shekhar Babu's book talks about that, that how Namashudra was the most important uh, community in the, uh, before partition, before partition and before 1947. So it was a kind of, uh, di uh, you know, kind of a divis uh, divisive possibility, possibility of uh, how to rule the country, um, how to rule Bengal by dividing and the Namashudras in that. So there are so many factors that went into the making. There is not only Namashudra, there's a wrong notion that only Namashudra is Dalit. There are so many uh, Rajabongshi and Professor uh, Rupa Kumar Barman was also there. And that time, so many uh, other uh, uh, community, Dalit communities live in Bengal, and but uh, uh, they are in fractured condition because of the uh, oppressive uh, uh, colonial rule. And later on, central government's policies policies and maybe the division within within the within themselves so that is another part of history we can think of but uh, bengali dalit writings have been translated in the last 15 years as the coordinate as uh, the contain uh, the uh, event uh, even management that taking care of bashudara right after bashudara arrived cities Karin city college she has mentioned that we I translated a book, the autobiography of Jyotin Bala, which is in press, Shahidta Academy, Central, Central Shahidta Academy, New Delhi. She called Chheda Jibon, Uprooted Life. That is a thrilling, blood chilling story of, uh, that, of living, living under the aligned sky, living under the uh, under aligned parameters where uh, everything is so different, so hostile their negotiations, appropriations later on, and looking into that. I am really grateful to all of you, all the luminaries present here, to start with uh, Professor Omiyo Kumar Panda, um, Honorable Vice Chancellor Sadhu Ramchand Murmu, University of Charam. And, uh, you know, when we talk about the administrators, we think that the administrators come and go. But see, Professor Panda is always here. Now, we need the administrators, vice chancellors, who will stand through all the academic programs. And he is a, himself a great scholar and a great scientist of chemistry taught in North Bengal University, with the Sagar University. Now, he is the, uh, one of the important persons in Bengal, very busy person, but now he is, see, he is all through this. And that's why administration, is uh, is something so special i know uh, we i learn a lot from you omioda thank you thank you so much 
and uh, you you are an ins inspiration you are an inspiration because it's not your domain but even then you took so much interest and you set the ball rolling and uh, it, it, you made the evening very very special thank you so much thank you so much uh, i thank all the dignitaries present starting with sudarshan kachri who is the publisher uh, professor roop kumar barman professor of history and who has contributed a lot uh, into this field dr megana rao from uh, kakti university of warangal and dr anindo is choudhury who could not make it because of his personal loss dr nishi pulugurtha bkc college uh, and the secretary of ipbl kolkata uh, as one of the translators and she read out a thrilling story and i could feel her pulse my special thanks to professor is armstrong professor and head department of english madras university for uh, taking extra trouble and while traveling professor armstrong ji thank you so much and madras in, is always my second home thank you so much visited to your university so many times and i have golden memory of, of city indra indra we all know professor indra australian studies department and so if possibly in my next birth i would be uh, uh, chennai born thank you thank you so much and thank you uh, uh, professor shudeen nikam and uh, professor nikam needs no introduction because we are so close sudeep ji uh we want to see you i uh, know and so i thank you sir his house thank you and uh, sudeep ji is a very special person and uh, i think uh, i visited your place for i think couple of times in his residence also in mumbai and uh, so he is a relentless scholar along with his wife also thank you thank you and uh, my best wishes to your wife as well who is a professor of english there thank uh, you sir thank you for your contribution and relentless uh, activism i will say in literary uh, literary community uh thank you uh, uh then i think i should thank uh, professor asaudin professor janat wilson and all translators who made this uh, book possible and it was really something very special that many distinguished scholars from different parts of india that attended and this is not one part of india from the northeast as uh, professor bashudhara rao mentioned from the northeast the eastern part of india northern part of india southern part of india it's a true indian uh, meet that's why india is so special one one india is one all united india and i thank each one of you from different parts from uh, from the south uh, to the north and the northeast to the west and uh, everywhere i remain grateful to you i remain grateful to bashudhara for coordinating the event so successfully you are always something very special and you bring your uh, your interventions are really great i thank all my colleagues and especially especially my uh, librarian uh, um, uh, Shumana Ganguly, who is present, and our library is a storehouse of Dalit collections. And any any donations, any uh, because we are building up library that all uh, all Dalit Dalit writings will be available in our uh, library. And we are uh, also in 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 the process of collaborating with uh, Translation Center of University of East Anglia. Uh, that is uh, where there is a Dalit database. in east india university that is created the database so thank you shumona for being with us and contributing a lot and uh, taking up uh, the challenge of our library uh, to take it to the international standard and uh, the administration is always with you i thank all uh, all present here all esteemed scholars from different parts of india administration administrators and my colleagues and everybody who made this event really really possible thank you so much and uh, uh, the book i also thank the reviewers the reviews of the first edition appeared in epw and many different uh, very visible journals in india and abroad and many people have taken care of the book for uh, scholarship 
I hope the second edition will go with your support, with your able shoulders. We need strong shoulders, Jyotin Babunit, your shoulders to take it forward. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Any comments to conclude? We would like to invite comments, questions, suggestions from the audience. If anybody would like to say hello, would like to drop in a comment, please feel welcome. If not, we come to the end of a very, very beautiful program. It has been a memorable evening, and it will be remembered very warmly by each one of us. Uh, thank you, Jerry, sir, for allowing me to be the first reader of this book and to uh, you know, contribute uh, an essay to it. Uh, thank you also for allowing me the opportunity to be a part of this beautiful program and to hear all these wonderful speakers who have added many dimensions to the book as also to my knowledge of the subject. Uh, we look forward to a continued association with all of you in the days to come. Thank you very much for making it to this evening today and we hope to meet again very soon. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Professor Meghna Rao. Professor everybody. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Anthony, and thank you. Thank you, Professor Armstrong. You are traveling. You are thank taking you. 